everyone, and welcome to Smells Like Teen Angst. We are here to talk about Cruel Summer, Season 2, Episode 6, The Plunge. What's that? Yay! And you may notice we are down one person today, but it's me and Jordan. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, if you watched last week's, you know we were going to a Fall Out Boy concert and Kiki went real hard and lost her voice. So <laughs> it happens. We say, it happens. We got you, girl. It'll be fine. So me and Jordan are tackling this episode of Cruel Summer. Um, I do. Man, well, I shouldn't have had this ready to go, but I did not. Um, I want to talk about a couple of comments that we received. That I love we, our comment section. I do too. So I'm just like, hold on. I want to talk about it real quick. Um, so this is one that use it's, it's one of those generic user HZ9, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, are you a real person or not? Um, said, did you ladies notice that all four fake IDs are authors? Isabella is the author of The Talented Mr. Ripley which is the story of living the life of his friend that he murdered and ended up getting away with. Jeff is the author of The Big Sleep, which is a murder blackmail novel. Luke is the author of The Born Identity. So maybe Luke isn't who he thinks he is. Uh, and they said, obviously, Luke is a true chamber, which, as we now know, after this episode is true. And then I just want to skip ahead. Megan, Megan's is the author of an investigative murder novels author. So I don't know if these are clues or just really smart writers. You know what? Either way, I love it. Uh, that's just brilliant. And thank you for pointing that out to us, user 79-not-a-robot. Because uh, that's fascinating. Yeah, I had no idea. I didn't look that close. I wasn't doing Reese. I just thought they made up names. So I think that's very cool. Yeah, same. We'll find out if they are hints or not. Um I will say The this, Talented Mr. Ripley is one of my favorite movies. If you have not seen it, it is such a good, like, what is happening here movie. And it's got Matt Damon and Jude Law when they're both, like, in their mid to late 20s. So they're both looking oh, yeah. real, like, good movie. Yeah, I agree. Um, people are not very happy about your and my theory, Jordan, about Megan and the man in the woods. <laughs> People are very much rooting against it, hoping that crazy lonely guy from Strong Girl Army is not a pervert, but it does seem likely. <laughs> hey, um, it doesn't seem right to me. I'm just saying. Yeah, no. Um, and then Robert Costa is like, I'm really hoping they're not going the Martin route with the bird shooter mustard man. <laughs> the mustard man. Uh, maybe he's a the father whose daughter man. passed away. Like maybe he's a father whose daughter passed away. And with Megan's daddy issues and feeling like an outsider. Um, they've created some sort of father-daughter bond, which, sure. Solid. Sure. Solid. Um, yeah. So, is, so uh, Lana Brown, is Megan messing with the bird man? Yeah, we know. We, <laughs> I love we don't that want we've it. all given him nicknames. I just yeah. love that part. <laughs> like, I think I have a name for him now. So uh, those are our fun comments of this week. There's more, but those are the ones that I chose. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, so let's talk about this. So it's summer of 1999. Everything's happy-go-lucky. And if you remember at the end of last week, Megan confessed her love of Luke to Isabella after those two had slept together, but Isabella did not tell Megan. So this episode starts with Isabella letting her know, I broke up with Luke. It also happens to be the night before his birthday when she did that. <laughs> talk about bad timing. Yeah. I was like, well, okay. And she's like, he took it pretty well. I'm surprised. I'm like, what else was he supposed he was to cool do? about it? Yeah. Like, I'm just like, that sucks. Like, can you imagine, though? Like, you sleep with this girl. You think she's super into you. And then also she's like, no, I'm okay. Nah, actually. Nah. What a, what a blow to the self-esteem. I didn't even think about that part. Like. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just like, it's so sad. It's so sad to me. And then, so Megan, of course, as Luke's best friend, is setting up his surprise birthday party. And she needs now she needs to make it the best birthday ever because now she's going to hit on him 
while she's dating Jeff. And this party is just messy. Like Brent comes over to help. He's like, it's going to be a birthday. He'll never forget. And it's just like, not great. It's not great. I do love though, that they show this birthday through Jeff's camera, as well as like the nice cameras for the show. I thought that was very cool. I loved the way it was filmed. And I will say, as we get deeper into it is how dare this show make me feel bad for Jeff? Because he has gotten on my nerves from day one. Yes. I have never liked him as a character. No. And now I have to feel bad for this kid? I know. I was annoyed too. I was like, how dare they? <laughs> um, so everyone, did you, Jordan, you have to tell me. They were like, everyone's partying. They're taking shots. And they were like, we're going to do hurricanes, which I know the hurricane cocktail. But like this version <laughs> of throwing drinks in people's faces and slapping them. I don't know what that is. I had never seen that, but also I'm going to steal it. Sarah, the next time we're out and some man is getting on my nerves, I'm going to order him a hurricane. I'm just warning you right now. I'm ready. You just let me know. You're going to look me dead in the eyes and say, is it hurricane time? (laughs) We should order him a hurricane, shouldn't we? (laughs) It'll be amazing. Um, So Isabella isn't at the party initially because she thinks it's going to be weird. And so Megan asks uh, Luke if it's okay. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. And of course, Brent is a dick to her. And then the girlfriend takes up for her. So I'm just like, oh, I know, I know, especially with this episode. Well, and she was, my thought was she was finally back because I was wondering where she had been. And we had said earlier, we thought she was going to be important because she kept popping up, but then she was gone for a couple episodes and now she's back. Yep. So welcome back. Brent's girlfriend, whose name I don't know. And I feel like I should. It's just Brent's girlfriend turned ex-girlfriend and this whole time Megan is dating Jeff but hardcore flirting with Luke in every way possible and it's so embarrassing it's so embarrassing like at the very beginning of the episode with the party Jeff is telling her about how his family would always go camping and they're having this cute little moment and blah 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 and he says i talked to my parents they you know they said i could bring someone this year do you want to come with us and she's not even paying attention because she's just looking at luke taking a shot like this is so embarrassing poor sweet baby jeff i know i'm like he's such a dick in the winter and so i'm like oh this is why we are supposed to like him because this is what we see happen i felt so bad and then there's a beer pong Go ahead. Go ahead. We're supposed to think that Jeff is justified when winter rolls around. And I'm not saying he is because your your pain is never an excuse to be a dick to someone else. However, I kind of see how he got there. He's 17 years old. Exactly. We just have to remember the ages of everybody for sure. Because I get that. Um, now there's a beer pong tournament. And of course, Megan's like, you and I are going to be partners to Luke. You know, she's just so adamant. And it's so... Immediately. Immediately. And she's she's like, it's not weird or anything. And like her whole energy is odd. Everyone, oh yeah, her hair not in a ponytail. It was very she's all not in a ponytail. It's down and curled now. And then like a cute dress. Can we talk about how Megan's look for the party is like very 90s rom com comedy moment where everyone's like, Oh, I didn't know how cute you were. And like literally all she did was put her hair down and put on a dress. (laughs) It's she's all that, man. She got Rachel Lee cooked. Right? I was like, okay. Um, And so this continues, this beer pong tournament continues to make things so weird and so incredibly awkward. And I'm so embarrassed for her. Like, I'm not embarrassed for Jeff. I'm embarrassed for her because it's a little uncomfortable. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. This entire thing is so icky. I was just embarrassed for everyone but then I have to remember like being a teenager and like my teenage friend group we were all this embarrassing like we legitimately would break up with someone the night before start flirting with somebody at a party the next day like in front of the person that I'm supposed to be dating it's just like weird teenage shenanigans Mm -hmm. that definitely would have occurred in the 90s because we were not I don't know how teenagers now act because I don't I know very few of them I'm in my 30s um but I feel like they're a lot more emotionally intelligent than we were I don't know. Are they? Aren't we all the same in the end? We all go through the same nonsense. Um, Yeah. Well, and then Brent, to uh, fulfill his best birthday ever promise, has 
got Luke a sex worker who I am unsure if she is a like a, a stripper. Full service. <laughs> Full service. But she, she rolls up, dressed as a cop, and she and Luke go to the airstream and, I guess, fool around, do something. It's like boys brag, so I don't necessarily know what actually I don't, happened. I don't think she was full service because boys brag. I think it was legitimately just a dance situation and everyone moved on. But he's a guy, so he's going to play it up. Exactly. And then we it moved because Megan goes to look and sees this happening. And then she goes to the living room. And this is possibly one of the most 90s moments of the entire show is the girls learning the genie in the bottle or genie in a bottle dance for Christina Aguilera in the living room. That was me and my girlfriends learning every Britney Spears. Oh, I loved it. Every back. I'm going to argue there's a more 90s moment that happens right after this, but we'll get there. When they do the dance for the boys. <laughs> when they do the dance for the boys and then the two girls kiss. That is the most 90s moment in the world. Not only are they doing the dance for the boys, but they have to have the weird, like, male gaze, I'm going to kiss another girl to make a guy excited moment. Yeah. And it's just like, listening to the boys all talk about Megan, like you were saying, while she's dancing and moving. And everyone's like, oh, who is this girl with her inhibitions? Like... <laughs> Like, it's just really funny and adorable. <laughs> um, and then I, there's a moment towards the end of 1999, of the summer of 1999, where Jeff calls out Megan. And I appreciated this because he's like, no, you're not going to play me like this. You're not going to act brand new. Because she's like, what are you talking about? I don't understand why you're upset. And he breaks up with her. And so yes. she's mad that he broke up with her and that she wasn't the one to do it. Just terrible, making me feel for Jeff. I know. What is that about? So annoyed. Ugh. But yeah, I was just like, he's like, I can see you're into Luke. Like, don't play with me. Because they even don't almost lie to me. Kissed. Stop this. this yeah. is stupid. They almost kissed at one point. They like fell on the ground and had one of those like Which, movie moments. Can we talk about them almost kissing? Because the only thought I had in my head as a 35 year old at that moment was those candles are melting right into that cake. That cake is going to be inedible. <laughs> well, so like to think of the cake. Think of the cake. My money going to waste. <laughs> uh, so the party ends, and they're all cleaning up. And Luke had a great birthday. And I love that Debbie and Steve come home because this is when they're beginning to date, and they're very much in that like cutesy, flirty thing, talking about the movies they saw, and they went to see American Pie. <laughs> Because you hear Steve be like, one night at band camp, and there's only one movie with that iconic right. line. Oh, I, they also say something about how the mom, when they come in, the mom's like, oh, I'll never look at a pie the same way again. So I knew it was American Pie off jump, but it was so silly. It didn't like, because sometimes, you know, with period pieces, and I'm like, okay, we get it. It's supposed to be the 90s. Stop doing this. That was actually really funny. Yeah. I loved this entire section of the summer of 1999. I feel like it sets things up really well. We finally get to see how he, like Megan ends up with Luke. We know filled in the blank of why Jeff is so pissed, you know, and kind of holds on to that for six months. <laughs> you know, I think it's yeah, it definitely, it definitely gave us a lot finally. Cause I did feel like, and I think even some of our commenters have said it, like it's dragging just a little bit. Like we're getting a little bit of drag. Mm-hmm. But finally, we've come to the the, the not the penultimate, yeah. but like the moment of answers. No, but things are starting. Things are starting to move. Absolutely. And then we get into winter of 1999, and this is when I realize we all realize that Luke is a chump. Um. <laughs> well, which one of us? Because I know that one of us was saying that we're very suspicious of Luke, and whoever that was, don't remember which one of us it was, but whoever one of us said that, we were right. Yes. Yes. So Luke, so there's this whole thing called the Chatham plunge, which is basically the polar bear plunge, but for their town. And yes. Can I tell you that for two seconds, I was like, that looks like fun. That's something I would do. And then I remembered how cold it was when we were in Seattle last December. And I said, oh, wait a second. Wait one goddamn minute. Well, I'm like, maybe it's so cold that you go numb. You know what I mean? Like it kind of does the I couldn't even take my jacket off when we were at that beach in Seattle. And these guys yeah. are just going in. Okay. That's true. First beach was so cold and windy. It was so, cold. It was so cold. That was so cold. You're right. Um, 
So it's a tradition between Megan and Luke. They go every year. However, this year, Megan is not going. And she doesn't say why, but it's to go help the man in the woods with a job. She gets a, she gets an A message from the mustard man and tries to play it off. And here's the thing. Megan is a terrible liar. Like, and that's terrible. what the show is proving. And Isabella mm-hmm. immediately knows that she's lying. Immediately. She's like, what's happening here? Uh, we then cut to Luke working out with the sheriff. And the sheriff sh- shares this, like, really lov- lovely personal story about going against his family's wishes in order to be his own person and to follow his own dreams which may be foreshadowing Luke's issue with his own family that we've kind of seen coming because he's the one who turned in the tapes on his brother. He's gone toe to toe with his dad about everything and he doesn't agree with it. So I'm like, that's a nice little setup. Um, So since Megan's not going, Luke and Isabella go to the plunge together as friends. And I liked when the, there's those boys on the beach who try to talk shit on Isabella and Luke does take up for her. And I appreciate that. He could have just been like, yeah, Mm -hmm. whatever, because they are playing into it being Isabella on the tape, but he's like, no, yep. we're not playing that game. Yep. So he, they he's like, showing machismo. Uh, there's a lot of like Luke machismo moments in this episode and a lot of him playing into like the braggadocious male stereotype. But this is mm-hmm. the one moment where it's like, you did it the right way. Thanks. Thank you. Finally. So the two jump in the water and they get out and it was really fun. And then Luke has a hand towel and she's making fun of him for bringing the, he brought the wrong towel. She's got one of those really nice bath sheets and she nicely shares the sheet. And Isabella 100% is innocently trying to be kind to someone who could give him him warm. Which by the way, I do not understand why someone of like in the chambers family with that much money and they have a maid would not know what a bath sheet looks like and grab the wrong towel. Like you can clearly, even when they're folded, tell the difference between a bath sheet and a and a hand towel. Sir. I know. Sir. You could just ask the maid to pack you a hand a bath sheet. Get it together. Yeah, I feel like he just like reached under the sink and grabbed something and then walked away like a dum dum. Um, and then I'm gonna keep talking about this storyline and then we'll cut back to Megan. Because I yes. just to keep it clean. So uh, Luke and Isabella kind of talk and he confides in her that he thinks Megan isn't really into him anymore. And Isabella shares that the only reason she broke up with him was because Megan said that she liked him. He's so flabbergasted by this. And I think Isabella meant it as like, no, she's obviously into you because she shared this with yeah. me when we were dating. But Luke takes it as, oh, the only reason I broke up with you because I still like you. And that's not what happened. That's it's not like what she meant. What she meant was this girl has loved you forever. Why would she stop all of a sudden and get your shit together? Mm-hmm. And then Luke calls out all the hits that she's taken for Megan. And it's both like, look, loyalty is the most important thing to me. And I'll never regret doing all these things. And then Luke says he thinks about her all the time and then kisses her. And Isabella's like, skirt, skirt. No, sir. He's like, I thought this is what this was. And she's like, you thought wrong, bro. No. Get out of here. No, no. Goodbye. Goodbye. I just, I'm just like, is this is such a dude thing and it doesn't even matter age. That the moment they think their girlfriend isn't into them, they're like, cool, who else can I find? Yep. Yes. I have. I had an ex- who we were friends first, and I should have seen this, but he warned me that every time before he broke up with the girlfriend, he would find another girl, cheat with the second girl, and then break up and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a cheater. And I should have recognized this pattern, but we would be like friends for like a year, and then finally we started dating, forgot about that conversation until two years later when he's ready to break up with me, and I was like, you did the thing. You found another girl already. Yeah, you did the thing. It's just like, it's such a dude thing to do and it's so annoying and they just like nailed this um and then they go away so then back to megan so megan goes to ned's house man in the woods has a name his name is ned (laughs) and he's got this like crazy security fortress of a home he's got fiber internet before any i don't even have fiber and like a secret panic room like and I feel like that's got to come back around at some point. I don't yes. think there's no way that we learned about Ned's weird, crazy internet bunker setup, and it's not going to be important later. It's got to come back around. Absolutely. 
And like he shares with her that he's got this whole security system that goes into lockdown and he's worried about Y2K. Now, for those watching the show that don't know Y2K, it was a really huge deal. People, experts did not know what was going to happen to the computers when everything reset at the millennium because it was going back to zeros. It was going back to like numbers they'd never done before. Yeah. And it was pure chaos. Banks, the government. It was a whole thing. So like everybody this was, was nervous as hell. Yeah. And then nothing happened, which is what's so great. Which is a great, uh, which is the best case scenario. But absolutely, absolutely. Like I remember like Wall Street thought everything was gonna shut down. Like it was crazy. So he's worried about Y2K. So anyone who doesn't understand, that's what was going on. Literally everyone in the world was worried about 2000 happening. Um, and he wants Megan's help to test it because he's worried about his thing, his fortress going off and being locked inside forever, I guess. This whole thing is very weird. I don't love it. It made me feel like he was going to kidnap her. And right. I, just, I thought for sure it was going to lock and stay locked. Like I didn't, it's got to come back around. There's no way that yeah. we learn about this and it's just a thing that doesn't exist later. Right. And then like. Megan, he like does it. Everything's fine. That doesn't happen. <laughs> he doesn't kidnap her right now. Um, and then he shows her like this project he was working on and then was fired and they shelved it. And he tries to bond with her. And this entire scene, I think, is like the perfect ABC of grooming of older people and younger children because he's relating to her on a personal level where he, he grew up poor, just like her. He taught himself coding, just like her. Just now like she did. Yeah, now he feels in control of his life, which is what she's looking for. And it's like, I'm just like, wow. People watch this and learn this as a lesson that if this a grown ass human is doing this to you, that's it's not friendly. It's not. Well, friendly. okay. And from jump, she's 17 years old. He's a grown man. A grown person never needs the help of a child. Point blank period. I don't care. I don't care if it's a lost dog. I don't care if it's your weird computer system. I don't care if it's like carrying in groceries. If there is some creepy old man who says that he needs your help and you are much younger than him, he doesn't need your fucking help. He can find a grown up to help him. Yep. 100%. 100%. Um, and then he makes some off the cuff remarks about the Chambers family and how much he hates them. So that's got to come into play somewhere. Like that's not nothing. And Megan's like, well, Luke's not like that. And he's just like, nah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And Luke and the mustard man are going to get into a shootout. That's what happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but girl, it's something. So next we cut to Luke is at Megan's house and it is very much to do damage control more than anything. So he shows up, he's got a shirt for her for the plunge that year. And he tells her how much he's really missed her over the last few days. And Megan has no desire to talk right now. She just wants to shut him up. And so she distracts him with sex. So she doesn't have to lie and say where she has and hasn't been. And then when they're done, she apologizes for being weird the last few days. And she says it's because she's still kind of holding a grudge about the whole money thing and how he and Isabella just don't understand the struggles that they're going through. And they make up. And then Luke, piece of shit to get ahead of the story tells Megan that Isabella kissed him. Kissed and he stopped things. <sighs> Sir. And this is where we learn that Luke is shady. This is where whichever one of us said, I think Luke is shady. You were right. Yeah. Pretty sure it was me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was, I'm like, I, I should have seen that coming. It was the, obvious direction for that to go because he doesn't want Isabella to come to her and be like this is what yeah. Luke did I was still shook though yeah oh I wasn't yes. ready I wasn't ready for that I honestly thought he was going to keep his mouth shut and I think I thought he was going to because I don't actually think Isabella would have said anything no I think she would have chalked it up to a weird yeah, I think it's one of those weird miscommunication, take it to the grave, nobody has to mention it things. And Luke had to go run his mouth run and lie about his. it. Yep. So next week's going to be fun um, when we get back there. Because we've also been wondering what could happen that separates Megan and Isabella like this. And this is and actually something... Go. 100% if she thinks Isabella still wants her man because Megan this whole time has been weirdly suspicious 
and saying off the cuff things, you know? And so it just validates what she's been projecting as, because, you know, yep. we, yeah, that's what it does. So let's dive into summer of 2000. So we are in our green filter. I do love that this season is twilight coated so much. Anyway, like it just really is. And I love everything about it. So we see Megan working on a new laptop. Where'd she get that? Because remember last week, her computer was confiscated by the police. And of course, we know where it came from. It came from the mustard man. And even her mom is like real sketchy about the whole thing. She's like, where'd you get this? And Megan is like so like rude to her mother and brushes her off and heads off to Luke's memorial where she goes and cries and Brent comes to sit and comfort her and they bond over memories of Luke. And I'm just like, I will say Megan in the summer of 99 was getting on my last nerve when it came to her mom, because as a 35 year old grown adult who pays taxes, I would never speak to or treat my mother that way. And no. she just like, her mom's asking her questions. She just puts her headphones on like, girl, girl, you're crazy. She's like, I get angsty. I get angsty. I promise you. Our entire channel is about teen angst. We relive our lives, but it's like next level rude. And like my mama would not have, my mom would have snatched those headphones straight right. off my she head. Would, my mom would not have put up with that. I don't know okay. what she would do if I tried that now today. Okay. Like there's no way. There's no way. Um, so there's something, I don't know what this would be, why they're showing this to us again. She's getting something out of a drawer and she sees birthday candles from that, from the birthday of summer of 1999. And I don't know if they use that just to like get us back and forth or if there's some bigger meaning, like something's hiding in the candles or something happened that day. Like, I think it's just the, just the jogging of the memory and the regret and the sadness that she feels. That's fair. I was just like, hmm, because it's like exactly a year from that birthday. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. We, but we are also getting to the point in the season where everything is a clue. <laughs> right. We've got, <laughs> what, four episodes left? Like, at this point, everything is a clue. Everything's a clue. Uh, so we then also learned that Megan has hacked into the FBI, apparently, and got the sealed records about Lisa's death. Because also at Which the end part- of last this part also stresses me out because cybersecurity back then was definitely not what it was today. But you want to tell me a teenage girl in her bedroom in Washington could hack into literal police files and get a sealed police report? I mean, maybe. I don't know. They keep that stuff under wraps because they don't want people to know. Um, but yeah, last episode we learned Lisa's death. She drowned because Trevor sent her this letter. So Megan is like down the Lisa rabbit hole. And her mom is also shocked at the fact that she got these records, but she's like just rolling with it. Um, And it turns out that Isabella left St. Bart's by helicopter after Lisa's death. And her parents have been using all of their connections to keep this entire thing quiet. And Megan is just connecting dots like Charlie Day. (laughs) Entire situation. So while like, I think there's like so many different storylines going on while Luke's death is the center of it. I think that there's so many other things like going on where like, the pregnancy happened. But what else is going on with the dad? Who killed Luke? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not going to just be but, one thing. And this is why I think that he had multiple ways that killed him. Because I think it's all going to come to a head on New Year's Eve. And something really crazy is going to go down for all these stories to meet up in one place. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe that's next week. I don't know. I don't watch Next On. So <laughs> we'll see. It gets hard. Every week it gets harder and harder to not watch it. I know. We're getting there though. So Debbie finally goes to look under Isabella's bed because Isabella told her last week that there's something under there she's going to want to see. And she finds it. She has a look of shock, but she doesn't tell us what it is just yet. Um, Then we cut to Steve running to the sheriff's office who is screaming at him about how no one's been arrested. It obviously is Isabella. And if the sheriff can't get it done, he's going to hire a private investigator, which I'm surprised it took him this long, to be honest. Throwing his money around. Exactly. And then he has the audacity to roll up to Debbie's house, demanding to speak with her daughter, demanding that he needs answers to these crazy rumors because he believes the girls are hiding something and he has to know what it is. And I am so proud of her mother for still standing ground against him and being like, she's not here. 
Yeah. You can't talk. To me. I just, in what world did he think he was going to, that that was going to work? But it's just that male privilege. I have money. Everyone's going to yeah. do what I say thing. And I'm so happy that Debbie told him, fuck off. And he's even like, her car is right there. And Debbie is like, I told you, she is not home. Yeah. I was like, thank you. Choosing your daughter, which is all she's been asking you to do and protecting her is all like, it's what she just has to do. And I'm so proud of those scenes. I think they're great. Then we see, I loved this transition because I know we're only talking about summer of 2000, but it transitioned from like summer 1999 to summer 2000, which I thought was cool with Megan in the backyard thinking of mm -hmm. Luke and then looking at Isabella's mug shot. Uh, and there were she, some great transitions this whole episode, honestly. Yeah, there really were. It was very smart and really fun to watch. Um, so apparently she's been trying to get a hold of Trevor to talk about this letter and he's just not getting back to her. And she's like, forget it. And she goes and confronts Isabella about St. Bart's and about Lisa. And she's screaming at her about lying from day one, lying about their friendship, lying about everything. And Isabella gives her version of the story, which who knows if it's the truth. It says Lisa was really drunk. She jumped in the water on her own. Isabella jumped in after her. But she was gone. And this was the worst night of her life. Do we believe that is the question. <sighs> I believe parts of the story or parts of the conversation, right? And the part that really sticks out to me is when she says, I wouldn't have lied to you. I would have been loyal to you. I learned my mistakes from what happened with Lisa. And that's a part that I 100% believe. The rest of it, I feel like the show is setting us up not to believe her and there could be more there. But at this point, everyone's still a suspect. Right. Because it's it's more so the why, right? Why did she jump in the water? Mm -hmm. Was it a dare? Was she just drunk and jumped exactly. in? You know, was they, she mad because Lisa? Because was she mad because Isabella and Trevor were dating behind her back? Like what? What was yeah. going on? There's so much. <laughs> Is your mom banging on stuff? <laughs> no, those are fireworks, dude. They're going nuts. Those outside. are fireworks. Yes. Hey. <laughs> it's like it sounds like your mom's putting away dishes. I was gonna say hi. Um, fireworks, man. It's <laughs> July. Guys. It's on Fourth of July. No, so just let it roll. Yeah, all right. I'm like, it's the fourth of July. We'll let it roll and, and you can do what you can. And we'll, we'll just hurry up and finish it. Just, yeah. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> I know. So Brent's girlfriend. So, oh, let me, I'll do this. Megan also then accuses Isabella of going back to the cabin to kill Luke like she killed Lisa. And Brent's ex-girlfriend overhears this entire thing. And she also learns that it was Isabella on the sex tape. And then she runs. And then did I? Miss this? Did we know she is the sheriff's daughter? I didn't know that. That's why when he greets her so warmly, I'm like, wait a second. Are they? What? He said, hey, sweetheart, nice surprise. And I said, I'm sorry. Did I miss this? Because I think I did. I'm glad you're also like, I don't know. So yeah. apparently the girlfriend, ex-girlfriend is the sheriff's daughter. And I was like, where was that nugget this of info? This whole town is so messy. And I know small towns are messy. I grew up in the burbs, but this town is messy. Messy. And of course, she tells him what she overheard. Like, there's no way she wasn't going to. And then we cut back to Debbie telling Megan that they need to talk. And she shows her these bloody sheets. And she's like, I need to know what happened. And Megan goes, what if you don't like what you hear? And then it ends. Fade to black. <laughs> I'm like... Oh my God. This was a really good episode. <laughs> this was. It definitely got me over the slump of the middle of the season. Because now I feel like we've got four episodes left, left and it's going to be just downhill from here. I actually think it's only two. I think there's only eight episodes this season. So I looked. Wikipedia says there's 10. Okay. So but we'll I know on our little thing, it goes up to seven. Yeah. Because they don't always give us the finale, which is so no, annoying. Don't. They don't want us. They don't want us to ruin it. Yeah. So we'll get the finale on like the Sunday before, basically. But yeah, this I thought this episode was so good. Like you said, the train a lot of the transitions were so great. The setting up of the story of a lot of the missing pieces we've had over the last six episodes were filled in. And I just this ending was just so good. I'm like, how are you still surprising me? How yeah, did I not know she was the sheriff's daughter? Like, no. And I'm just still at everyone is a suspect because. Luke himself is now giving people reasons to kill him. Right. Megan is getting so many more reasons to be angry and upset with him. Isabella's still shady. 
Brent has mm-hmm. never been a, I've never been a fan of his. Uh, yeah. The dad's a psycho. So everyone's a suspect. Everyone's a suspect. And it's going to be, I just hope it's so good. I just hope it's so good. Yeah. Like, the only person who I think didn't do it is Megan's little sister. That's she's the only one. This poor little girl who gets pops in like once every four episodes. <laughs> you know, like, good for you. Good for you. Uh, but yeah, I cannot. I can't wait for next week. I'm very excited. Sorry we were late on this one, guys. But who knows when you would have watched this? It might have been late for you too. Yeah. Um, but do you have anything else you want to say about it? Oh no, that's that's. It was a good one. It was a good one. Awesome. So that's all we got. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment all your thoughts. We love it. As you know, I start reading them because they've gotten so good. Uh, Ring the bell, thumbs up, share with your friends, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Mm